Hello traders, D7 here. Let's take a look at the markets. This is our weekend edition. And this is the S&P looking at a daily. Today, today we had a sell off down 338 points the Dow. And, um, but wow, the NASDAQ, now the Dow was down almost 4%. The NASDAQ was down 5%. The Russell's was down 7%. I'll tell you, the NASDAQ was down 5%, the Russell's was down 7 The S&P and the Dow are down about 4%. People say that the Russell's and, and NASDAQ are leading indexes, or indices, if you will. So pay special attention to those. We're getting big sell-offs right now. They're um, in the Russell's and NASDAQ. Now, here's where we are. We did start to go up, and then we came crashing back down. We said in yesterday's video that we should go over the moving averages to stay bullish. I really fully expected us to get to this trading um, line. I really thought we would do that with yesterday's momentum, how we closed for the day. It did not happen. But I said for us to really go bullish, we needed to pierce 950, which had been this resistance line, and then 1,000. Then we'd have to deal with the, you know, the 50-day declining 50-day moving average. Also, <clears throat> I mean, there's a lot of resistance up here. But I thought we were going to give it a good try. Now, we have a cross between a symmetrical triangle and a descending triangle. A true symmetrical triangle has the same angle that this is going down. You get a mirror effect of that angle coming up. They're symmetrical. That's why we ha it's called a symmetrical triangle. Now, a descending triangle is a flat support area with a descending top. So this is a cross between a symmetrical triangle and a descending triangle. So this S&P is leaning more towards the bearish side. However, if we go over here to the Dow and take a look at the Dow, the Dow has given us what looks to be more like a symmetrical triangle. Symmetrical triangle. So uh, the symmetrical triangles can break out or break down. But right now we have some weight right to the downside. Look at this. We're on the lower, so lower side of the zero line on the MACD. That doesn't bode well. We're below the falling moving day averages. That doesn't bode well. Another thing I don't like on the S&P and the Dow is look at this white candle, big white candle. Look at the middle area of that white candle. Just kind of imagine this split in this white candle in half. We closed below the middle part. I don't like that it closed that um, there. That should have been seen as um, support, and it wasn't. We actually got down just below 8,500, so we broke that 8,500 area also. That's where we closed. I, you know, just isn't great. It, uh, you know, thunder in the distance here. Just keep an eye on that. But let's take a look at the the Nasdaq. Here's the Nasdaq. Look at this. This trend line is as horizontal as it gets. So what did I just say a minute ago? A descending triangle is bearish. Flat bottom, descending top. This is a bearish formation any way you cut it. Bearish, bearish, bearish. I mean, go to our chart school at freetradingvideos.com, look at descending triangles, and then compare it to the NASDAQ. And also, the Russells, let's take a look at the Russells. Oh, we have, I'm gonna get rid of this line here. It's almost a descending triangle, almost, but it's slightly coming up, but it's weighing significantly more to the downside. It's below the moving averages. We're down here near this, we're below the zero line. Um, you know, this just, I mean, we closed near the day's uh, low today. Uh, we had a major sell off right at the end of the day. I mean, the, the afternoon looked very bullish. I mean, we were screaming, going straight up. And then the last hour of the day, a major sell-off. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. Let's think about this for a second. Why, does, why shouldn't that surprise us? I mean, the markets yesterday reported that we had a seven-year high in, in jobless claims. Uh, Nordstrom's, JCPenney, Kohl's, I don't know, who el whoever else, you know, lowered guidance today. Everybody's saying we're going to go into this recession if we're not already in it, and how deep. 
So um, things look very, very bearish out there. And um, nobody in their right mind wanted to hold long in any significant way, at least, um, over the weekend. So everybody and their brother wanted to get out of this mess. And they saw significant strength this afternoon. I mean, we were down like 270 points in the morning. By the afternoon, we were in positive territory, and people just sold right into that strength, you know, to say, I'm out, I'm out, and I'm out too. Everyone was getting out. So um, I'm going to go a little further here, and let's look at the weekly charts on each of these. <clears throat> Here's the Russell's Weekly. I'm going to get rid of some lines, remove lines for current symbol. And let's take a look at this formation. We drop, 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 drop. We have what looks to be kind of a low base formation. A low base formation is in fact bearish. If you know, if we crack below 450 on the Russells, pay special attention to 450. If we close below that, um, it's just going to keep dropping. That was a significant drop here. Now we're just chopping around. Our next drop could give us a leg the same size. If you get a drop, now think about this. If you get a drop of, of this magnitude right here, you know, down here, that is going to be severe. Whatever leg you have here, you usually get the same leg after a, a low base formation. And let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Remove those lines. Down, low base. If we break down here below this 1500 mark, pay, <laughs> pay special attention if we close for the week, um, this next week below 1500. And let's also take a look at the Dow. Here's the Dow. Low base. This one popped up a little more, the Dow. And it's even though it says NASDAQ right there, it's um, I'm going to move this down just slightly. It's actually the Dow Weekly. This just isn't changing, so I'm going to get rid of that. And let's take a look at the S&P. The S&P, let's get rid of some lines. Low base formation. I'll tell you, if we break below this, I mean, what it, would that be? You know, I don't know. Where, let me get a cross here on here. 850 is right there. Yeah, if we close be below 850, 850, wowzers. That's gonna be that's gonna be tough. That's gonna be tough for the market. So pay special attention to the broad markets here, and um, we we you know be looking at the weeklies and and also the monthlies. Just go here, put in M. Here's our monthly. I mean, we're below the 200 on the monthly. And um, look at this. This is on the S&P. We have these support areas. I mean, we're right there at it. And if we close below 850, we're going to be at 800. I'll tell you, woe to us if we go under 800, guys. If we close below 800, um, that's going to be a huge money-making opportunity for all of us bears. If you don't know how to go short or buy bear ETFs, if you're not wired that way, you need to get wired that way fast because if we start to drop all employees all dollars on the table and let's take a look at the wrestles this is a monthly we're below the 200 um, I'll tell you if we close below the 200 on the wrestles you know that's gonna be very bearish and uh, we still have a couple three weeks left in this month so interesting to see what happens there and support areas gonna be way down here <laughs> and remember this is 2002 2003 levels so that's what we're teetering on right now. So anyway, there you have it. A very big, broad review of the broad markets. Happy trading to you. We'll catch you over the weekend talking in the forums. Till next time, be safe and capital preservation is key.